I have diabetes and have been warned that if I don't take care of it, it could lead to diabetic retinopathy. Exactly what is that? Diabetic retinopathy is the most common way that diabetes would affect your eyes. The retina is the lining in the back of the eye, this portion back here, that you can think of as the film in a camera. Diabetes can also produce cataracts, which is a clouding of the lens up here. Cataracts are very common in older individuals, even more common in diabetic patients. It can also produce glaucoma more commonly, uh, where the fluid that the eye naturally makes doesn't flow out as easily and therefore elevates the pressure, damaging the optic nerve. However, by far the most common effect of diabetes on the eye is in the retina, in what's termed retinopathy. There are several ways that diabetes can affect the retina. The retina can develop abnormal blood vessels growing. Those are called neovascularization. They're very fragile and prone to breaking open, bleeding, filling this back cavity of the eye with blood. Those are what produce floaters, or what individuals often term floaters. The abnormal blood vessels can also lead to scar tissue, which can pull on the retina and detach it. The other manifestation that's most common in the retina is that the retina can become swollen, what we term diabetic macular edema. Are there any symptoms that precede retinopathy? Ideally, no, because as I mentioned, once the vision's detrimentally affected by changes from the diabetes, such as the swelling or diabetic macular edema, often there is some irreversible damage to the vision. Therefore, it's really important that individuals with diabetes have a dilated eye exam on at least an annual basis through their eye care provider and at least annually thereafter continue to have dilated eye exams. The examination that you're able to have in such a fashion is much more thorough than that performed by, say, your primary care physician through an undilated pupil. What can I do to take care of diabetic retinopathy? I'm, I want to answer that in two parts. First of all, what we can do together to take care of your diabetic retinopathy and then secondly, what you can do uh, in the global aspect to take care of your diabetes in terms of your entire health and therefore lessen the likelihood that we're going to develop problems with diabetic retinopathy. Uh, diabetic retinopathy now is much more treatable than it was in the past. 40, 50 years ago, we really did not have any good treatment uh, short of extreme measures. Now, the most common treatment for the diabetic swelling in the back of the eye or for abnormal blood vessels is laser performed in the office. It's performed as an outpatient. It typically is not uncomfortable or minimally so. There's no incisions, no chance of infection. You go home the same day with no restrictions. There are other methods that can be used if the diabetic swelling doesn't respond to laser. And those involve potentially sometimes injecting a small amount of, of, small amount of cortisone into or near the eye, which sounds worse than it is. It's done in the office routinely as well, after we numb the surface of the eye. Uh, in some instances, surgery, where we go inside the eye, in the operating room, as an outpatient typically, uh, can be performed to remove the vitreous jelly and some scar tissue that might be pulling on the retina microscopically and contributing to the formation of that swelling. If you develop scarring or bleeding that fills the inside of the eye. Those floaters develop to such an extreme that you can barely see out of the eye and fill the entire inside with blood. We can similarly do surgery. That's typically done as an outpatient to remove that blood and that scarring so that we would prefer to avoid surgery if possible. Anytime we can avoid surgery, it's preferable. It's less risky for the patient. However, we have a lot of additional tools now in our armamentarium that we can use to treat this than we did even 10 and 20 years ago. But we have to detect it in order to be able to treat it. So again, that annual or a dilated eye exam at the frequency that your eye professional recommends is absolutely necessary. All too often we'll see individuals who feel that they're not having a problem and they'll skip that exam or sometimes skip several years worth of exams. It's an unfortunate thing that all too commonly happens, and then we have individuals who come in and uh, aren't able to see their children at their wedding or see their grandchildren, or healthcare professionals. I've had physicians and nurses who will, in great denial, ignore their diabetes for years and come in with severe changes. So uh, from the individual's aspect, 
it is absolutely necessary to make sure you get that annual dilated eye exam. From the aspect of what you can do as an individual in working in conjunction with your primary care physician, there have been multiple studies that have shown that you can significantly slow the development of diabetic retinopathy if you take optimal control of your blood sugars. There is a study termed the Diabetes Complication and Control Treatment Trial. And what it was hoping to find is what level of blood sugar control is necessary in order to potentially halt the progression of diabetic retinopathy. And for that matter, all the other changes throughout the body from diabetes. Really, the changes throughout the body and the eye are linked. The retinopathy is a reflection of damage to the small blood vessels in the eye, in the retina. And other manifestations of diabetes throughout your body, whether it be a heart attack or the neuropathy and loss of feeling in your legs, kidney failure, are all similarly damaged to the small microcirculation, the small blood vessels throughout your body. All of that can be delayed or at least slowed by taking good control of your diabetes. What the Diabetes Complication and Control Treatment Trial found is that unfortunately there's not a magic level where these complications are totally arrested. But what it found is that the better control that you have of your blood sugar, the more you will slow these changes. So that if your hemoglobin A1C, the blood test that gives you a two to three month average of your blood sugars, is eight, you'll develop more changes more rapidly than if your hemoglobin A1C is seven. And currently, the recommendations of the American Diabetes Association is to try to essentially normalize your hemoglobin A1C or normalize your blood sugars so that typically you're going to want your blood sugars 100 to 120 ideally. Also, other factors such as high blood pressure, high cholesterol, cigarette smoking heavily weigh into the development of such microvascular changes in the eye and elsewhere. If you have swelling in the back of the eye from the normal blood vessels becoming leaky, that diabetic macular edema, you can make, you can think of that as analogous to having leaky pipes in your basement. And if you turn up the pressure, they're going to leak more. So if you're developing diabetic swelling in the retina and you have hypertension that's uncontrolled, it can make the swelling in the eye and therefore your vision worse. It can make it more difficult for us to treat and control. High cholesterol is another factor that can contribute to the development of that swelling and manifestations that can per permanently worsen your vision. Cigarette smoking constricts the blood vessels throughout the body and therefore compromises the circulation to the retina, the eye, and the other organs in the body that I mentioned as well. So from your personal aspect, I greatly uh, emphasize to patients that they need to take responsibility and an interest in and be aggressive about working with their primary care physician to optimize their blood sugar control, make sure their cholesterol and their blood pressure are under good control, and to absolutely make sure that they don't smoke. If you have any other questions concerning diabetic retinopathy or its effects on the eyes, certainly always feel free to contact your eye care professional at any time.